What's up? How's it going? <clears throat> Welcome to another episode of Talking to Myself. I'm your host, Jake Letizia, and this is the podcast where I look into a camera and I talk to myself. How's it going? How you doing? Good? I hope you're doing good, dude. Let me adjust my fucking vocals a little bit so I'm not blowing out your eardrums, dude. I don't want to fucking hurt your goddamn ears, so let me make sure I'm a little quieter because I'm a loud fucking person. Another recording from my apartment, dude. I kind of like recording in here. I don't at all, but I also do. I don't like setting it up. The whole reason to not have it in my room is so that I don't have to set it up every single time and feel super fucking cluttered in here, but at the same time, it's kind of nostalgic. It's nostalgic to do this podcast in a tiny New York City apartment because that's where I started it. I started it in the last apartment I had. In a tiny fucking... It was so small that I had to have the camera outside the door. (laughs) It was such a tiny apartment that I needed my roommate not to be home so I could prop open the door so that the light and the camera could be outside of my room so that I could film it without people being like, Hey man, are you in a shoebox, dude? Are you in a rat hole? Are you inside of a wall? If I put the camera in my room with me doing the podcast when this first started, you would have thought I lived inside of the wall. You would have thought I was a cat in the wall. Cat in the wall, eh? If you're an Always Sunny fan, you got that. If you're not an Always Sunny fan, kill yourself. That's how it goes, man. If you're not an Always Sunny fan, you it's fine and you're probably fu- you're probably an okay person. But I probably, we're not gonna, I'm gonna like you less. You know, I've said that about food on here. With meat, if you eat meat, I will love you more. It just is what it is. And I, that goes for the, uh, it's always sunny as well. TV shows, it's, dude, when you meet somebody who likes the same television and the same music as you, you like them better, dude. I know this is something that we don't talk about or we, we don't want to say because you want to believe like, hey... Those superficial things don't matter, but they do matter, dude. If somebody told me that they like the song Cellophane, I love them more. I just do. I like them more. When people are connecting with the same things you connect with, you are like, fuck yeah, dude. I want to spend more time with you. If somebody comes up to you and says, Inspector Gadget is my favorite movie of all time, you go, that's rad. You thought I was going to say it's not red. You thought I was going to shit on somebody for Inspector Gadget. No, dude. I love Hook, so I'm not shitting on anyone for Inspector Gadget. But if somebody comes up to you and says, my favorite movie of all time is Shawshank Redemption, I go, get the fuck away from me, dude. Really, dude? Shawshank Redemption is an incredible movie. It's a very good movie. It's an undeniably great film. But if I ask you what your favorite movie is and you say that, you haven't seen enough movies. Because Shawshank Redemption is your favorite movie when you've only watched uh, Stuart Little, you know? (laughs) Shawshank Redemption is like the first movie a teenager sees and goes like, oh shit, that was crazy. And then you start watching other movies that like actually... They do they do more interesting things than just be a solid movie. You know what I'm saying? Shawshank Redemption is better than Green Book, but they're on the same level of favorite movie, if you say that to me. If you say your favorite movie is Green Book, I'll go, hey, man, you're one step away from Shawshank. Anyway, I'm here again. I'm here again because my schedule is very different. Uh... And I'm trying to figure it out. I'm trying to figure out how the fuck not to be so tired all the time. You know? That's the best part of having a full-time job. That's the coolest part of getting a full-time job. Nine to five, you go to an office. Now you're just tired all the time. Isn't that cool, dude? You make you make more money and you're you're better off financially, but you're tired constantly, dude. Is the trade-off worth it? I don't really know. You're going to be paid more to do less. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's such a weird... Work in general is strange. 
the more you work, the less free time you have to do things with the money you're gaining from working so much. What the fuck is the point then? Not to, you know, I'm not making that much money, but I'm making more than I did. And it's, it's just like, my friend just got a new job and he said it perfectly because this is the exact feeling I had. And it's the feeling everyone has when you're unemployed. It is horrible. It is depressing. It is the, it is fucking draining on your soul and your mind. And you feel like a worthless piece of shit constantly. At least that's how I felt. And I think other people feel that way. A lot of people, you're unemployed and you're trying to find a job and you feel like there's nothing you can do to finally get it. And then you finally get that job and you're like, this is awesome. I'm going to be making money, but also I don't want to start this job. (laughs) Because while you feel like a piece of shit and awful and horrible and like a waste of space when you're unemployed... You also have the most free time of all time, you know? You also have no obligations to anyone or anything, and you're just kind of hanging out, and it's pretty dope. It's pretty dope. It's not sustainable because you need money, but it's pretty fucking dope to do nothing all the time. And I had a... I I mean, I still have the job. I Like... Right now, I have two jobs, but one of those jobs was... Enough to money to get by and just the most open schedule of all time. And it honestly, I was I almost turned down this other job that would make me more money because I was like, damn, dude, but it's fun to fucking barely work during the week. It's fun to have all of my time be my own and still not worry about paying rent. You know, it's pretty fucking dope. Anyway. I had a booger in my nose at work. I'm trying to figure out the etiquette. I haven't been in... Everyone's been working from home. I've been working from home. I haven't been working with other people in a long time. And this is my first... It's my second office job, but this is my first office job where I'm, like, really going to do the job. My other first... My first ever office job, I was there for a week, and I pieced the fuck out. But this one, I've been... This is my third week there. So I guess I'm going to try and commit to this environment. And I'm trying to figure it out. I've never had a pantry before. I've never had a kitchen that's just got snacks in it that's for everybody. So I don't under, I don't know the etiquette of who takes what. Because in this pantry, Cheez-Its show up, okay? And Cheez-Its disappear. Because Cheez-Its are the best. There's tons of snacks. There's Milano cookies. There's Cheez-Its. There's chips, there's oatmeal. No one ever eats the oatmeal, because why the fuck would you eat the oatmeal? No one really eats the chips, but sometimes they do. The Milano cookies, people eat a good amount, and the Cheez-Its are gone within a day. Within a day, they are gone. It is down to one bag. And when I first saw the Cheez-Its, I was like, "Do am I... I took a bag when it was stocked up, but then... Throughout the day, there was only one bag of cheese that's left, and then and then it, it was just sitting there for hours, and I was like, am I allowed to take this? Where are these snacks from? Is someone bringing it? Did someone specifically bring Cheez-Its for themselves, or is this a communal thing? It looks like communal baskets, but at the same time, I'm new to an office environment. I don't want to fuck up someone's treat that they got for themselves, you know? I know how important it is to respect someone's treats. I fucking, dude, I, I bought a chopped cheese today and I came home with it. And if somehow someone else ate it, I would fucking not only not like them and not talk to them ever again, I might th- throw a punch. I might punch them in the fucking eye. When you, when you buy something specifically for yourself and then you either... Dude, I've spilt monsters and been viscerally angry in a way where it made me feel bad about myself. <laughs> I've spilt caffeinated drinks, mainly monsters, but also coffee. Just beverages where it's got the caffeine in it that I need. That I need. And I spill it by accident and I just watch... Three bucks pour onto the ground and I get viscerally angry and in my brain I go, oh, it is a drug. Oh, dude. 
it you know it's not it's not it's not much different from someone who is on some sort of other addictive drug i guess alcoholic i want to say crack but i i've never done crack i've never been around crack i guess i've been around heroin i've seen people and known people who've died of heroin or done heroin but heroin i feel like you're fucking so fucked up that you can't even get angry that someone takes your shit maybe meth maybe meth will get you fucking revved up maybe meth oh coke coke that's the easiest fucking connection coke When I spill my coffee accidentally on the ground, it's not a coffee. It's always a monster. I'm just trying to fucking make it sound better. Because apparently when you say monster, people fucking shit on you, dude. Fuck that, man. But it's a little it's a little version. It's, a, it's not quite as aggressive as a man who gets his cocaine, whose cocaine falls into the ocean. But it, it, it is more intense than someone stealing your cookies. Do you know what I'm saying? Caffeine is somewhere in the middle ground of I'm not a junkie, but I also, but I, I'm, am. <laughs> I'm not addicted to it, but I am addicted to it, but I'm not a junkie, but I'm, but I have an unhealthy addiction that is debilitating. But Mons, dude. People look down on me for fucking drinking a monster. It's fucked. At work today, so or not today, but recently, some dude was asking the guy next to me, he's like, were you drinking a soda the other morning? And he's like, no, I wasn't drinking a soda. Because I guess they hear me pop open a monster. Because I drink one in the morning, dude. You know why? Because it's easier to find that than coffee, dude. And I'm not going to go to a coffee shop in the morning when it's fucking packed. That's psychotic, dude. You go to 7-Eleven. You go to a fucking bodega. You grab a monster. It takes three seconds, dude. And also, they got coffee there. They have as much coffee as you want to drink for free at the office. So why the fuck would I bring coffee? What kind of psycho do you think I am? So I bring something they don't have. I drink a monster in the morning. Fuck you. <laughs> so I'm so I guess he heard me pop it open because everyone's doors are open. And then the dude goes, No, that wasn't me, that was Jake. He goes, What are you drinking? A Coke? Were you drinking a monster? He's like, No, that wasn't me, that was Jake. Yeah, it was a monster. He drinks a monster every morning. And that and then I said from my room, I was like, What's up? Yeah, I do, dude. Like trying to trying to you know be a do like a bit trying to make a joke out of it yeah dude I do so what I'm trying to have a little fun and they just kind of didn't respond they're like oh okay and I get it dude some of these people are fifty years old they're not in the same age range as me also we're in a work environment maybe they don't understand that I'm trying to fucking have a back and forth with them but at the same time dude I'm joking around joke back with me dude. That's the thing, too. I'm making too many jokes in this office, and people are just looking at me like, "What are you? Do? what's up? What are you doing, man? We hate being here. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I know, dude. I, everyone hates it. Let's fucking liven it up. Let's make it a little bit better. I'm saying the most mild shit. You can't... You don't need to crack a smile, but don't look at me like I'm insane. You know why I'm making a joke. Because it's fucking tense. Anyway, I don't know, man. I've talked about boogers a lot in this podcast and and how and how if if you're with a partner and they don't tell you there's a booger in your nose, they don't love you. And if a friend doesn't tell you there's a booger in your nose, they're not a real friend. And I gu- I guess they're your coworkers then. I guess that's how it works because I was in my office and I swear to god, in the middle of the day, I went like this and a booger a giant booger just just immediately dropped out of my nose which means it was dangling dude it came out of my nose so quick and swiftly that it means i had that booger dangling in my nose all morning all morning to all afternoon just dangling no one said a fucking thing people definitely looked right at it and were like ew what the fuck the new guy's got a booger in his nose but no one said a thing to me no one helped me out and to be fair maybe they didn't see it because we are wearing masks. So then again, maybe it's not on them. Because every time I go to somebody else's office, I have to put a mask on. But 
people walk by mine. <laughs> people walked by mine and my door is open and my booger was big. So I'm just saying, dude. I'm just saying. I don't know. I guess that courtesy doesn't extend to team members, dude. I guess if you're co-workers, you don't warn each other about the boogers in your nose. I don't know, dude. But anyway, I took the Cheez-Its. I took the Cheez-Its. I did. I ended up doing it. <laughs> the first day there were Cheez-Its, I didn't take the last one. But the second day there were Cheez-Its, I said, fuck it. And I took like three bags of them. I don't give a shit. I took two bags initially, and then there was one left. And I said, fuck you. And I took a third. Fuck it. It's the mo It's the least I can do. Or the least. I don't know. It's, it's what I'm going to do. Is what I want to say. Because I don't take a lunch. I haven't, I've taken a lunch maybe once. And even when you take a lunch, you kind of leave and then you just come back and eat at your debt. So I'm not... If I'm not going to take a lunch, I'm, I'm, I've am i earned three Cheez-It bags. Don't you think? <laughs> uh, I tweeted a recently. I tweeted a Cheez-Its are amazing. They're the best cheese-based snack of all time. And if you don't agree with that, you're a piece of shit and you should fucking die. Which I don't believe, but that's what you got to do if you're on Twitter. If you're on Twitter, man, you got to talk the talk, man. You got to be a part of the horrible uh, conversation. You got to be part of the conversation. You got to talk on everyone's level, and everyone's level on Twitter is fucking brain dead, dude. <laughs> everyone's level on Twitter is mildly funny or crazy psychotic. That's what they're doing out there. Either barely make a joke... That other people go, oh, fuck, that was so good. Or be the craziest human being alive. And then and then people are either like, that's funny, because they get it. Or people are like, no, you just meant that 100%. <laughs> it's so funny. There's certain people on Twitter who say crazy shit, and it's meant to be funny. And it's so obvious it's meant to be funny. And then people take it at face value. And then I have to be like, dude, that I, I don't think that person's serious. And they're like, no, I think he was. And I was like, I mean, I just watched him on a podcast say that he d is never serious when he tweets. So <laughs> I heard he said straight up, I try and say the most ridiculous thing when I'm tweeting because people will believe it. And that's funny to me. So I think, I don't know. But it is what it is. But that's part of the game, isn't it? Part of doing, making a joke like that is people believing you. I mean, that's, I guess that's what you're going. That's the very thing you're going for. So if it happens, you succeeded. <sighs> Fucking. Anyway, dude, I forgot to talk about last week. In Nashville, there was, when we were in Nashville, if you didn't listen to last week's podcast, I went to Nashville for my brother's bachelor party and someone died in the street. Some woman died in the street or it seemed like she was dying. But I forgot to tell you guys that there was like this group of fucking young, young middle-aged uh, Jesus boys. They were like young, they were like dudes who were hanging out in the midst of the chaos of the bar scene to, to pull people to the Lord. Like they were, they had a microphone and they were like, run, run away from sin. You need to get away from sin. You need to get away from your sin. You guys are sinning. You guys are a part of a, of a hellish existence, but we could save you. And they're shouting this at like 20 year olds who are looking the fuck. Like they're not, there's no, like, no amount of scripture is better than uh, your dick inside of a vagina, you know? <laughs> I don't know what it feels like to have a dick inside of a vagina, but I'm sure scripture's not better than that either. I'm willing to bet that scripture, that anything that God apparently said, none of it, you choose over your penis inside of a vagina or, or your vagina having a penis inside of it. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying sex is better than God, for sure. Even if you believe in him, what the fuck are we talking about? So when people are revved up, drunk, walking to the bars, horny as shit, 
a dude with a weird beard on a fucking microphone that some for some reason for some reason has a green windscreen. You're not gonna convince them not to do anything. Do you understand what I'm saying? Maybe they get some people who are leaving the bar. I don't know. Maybe some people who are leaving the bar in the middle of the night they fucking did some weird shit. They did a little too much cocaine. Who knows? They fucking. I mean, honestly, the woman who died, that's what they're looking for. That's, I thought to myself, why are these people here? Like, why the fuck are these people here? They, they couldn't possibly recruit anyone. And then I saw that woman fucking looking like she was dead on the floor, the 50-year-old lady, and I was like, that they're psyched right now. <laughs> I was like, they are definitely like, we got to follow the ambulance to the hospital and be there when she wakes up so we can be like, hello, sister. You are alive because of us. We made sure that the ambulance took care of you. Meanwhile, what happened was they were like, You fucking treacherous women in your scanty... <laughs> no, they weren't. They actually didn't. I was expecting them to be more aggressive than they were. They just kept talking about people as sinners and shit. But they didn't like, they didn't like attack anyone for what they were wearing or anything like that. I don't know. Maybe that's an old school way. I'm sure years ago, I'm sure 10 years ago, people were like, you know, screaming whore at people. Maybe they even, maybe they were that night. Maybe I just didn't hear it. I don't know. I was, again, I was rolling. I was walking around with 11 dudes. So it would take about a minute and a half before they saw a woman to say something mean to her. Do you know what I'm saying? The train of us has to pass... And a, and a two and a half minutes have to go by for a woman to finally be in the vicinity. But those dudes must have been psyched. Those bible dudes. I don't know. I just... Religion is an old man's game, I feel like. You know what I'm saying? I guess it is a young man's game because that's when people are very... Um, Easily influenced, I guess. But they all leave. They all leave. You all get... You, every person... Not everybody, I guess. Not everyone leaves, but a lot of people do. But I guess it's worth pushing your message on a, a million people so that a thousand end up going with God. Like, who is the guy that goes with those dudes? Who is the guy? And they had a crew with them. And part of me thought that, like, the, the church pays them to do that. And all those dudes were just, like, good performers. They weren't actually, you know, they're like open, they're like open mic comedians. <laughs> they're like, there's no mic tonight, so we fucking go out here and we kind of get a similar kind of practice. <laughs> Could be. At least we get paid for it. I don't know. It's stage time, dude. I know some people who would who would do that. It would be like, listen, man, it's stage time. <laughs> listen, I might have to shout at these people on the street about Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Is that is he actually my Lord and Savior? No, but it'll be fun. It'll be it'll help my crowd work. <laughs> oh fuck! I do. I like it in here, man. It's nice in here. There's something so cozy and intimate about it that I really like. I'm congested as shit, dude. I keep coughing. Dude, I got COVID, bro. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. I don't, dude. I don't. I'm vaxxed. I'm fucking... I've had it before. I got the antibodies. I'm all good. But I have been coughing and I'm congested. I got post-nasal drip, dude. How does one get that? You get it at random points in your life and always you want to kill somebody. I got post-nasal drip right now and I got three canker sores. What the fuck is happening to my body? Is it because I just started this new job and I'm all over the place? I'm not getting enough sleep? Maybe. Maybe my body's shutting the fuck down. They're like, hey, listen, man. Go back to the previous schedule. Well, I can't, dude. I've made my choice. Oh, I guess I could talk about this. Well, there's only... I'll talk about this in the next part. I, uh... There's a bunch of shit I didn't talk about. You know what? Next part, I'll talk about some of those things. But right now, before the timer goes out, I'll say this. Dude, 
my local grocery store, they won't say bye to me. <laughs> and it's driving me insane, dude. They have to say bye. I come in there almost every day. Super nice, cordial. I go, hey, how's it going? They go, they go good. Pay with your card. I pay with my card. I go, have a good one. Have a good day. And they, for 90% of the time, are silent as shit, dude. They're so silent. And they're so giving me nothing that if one of them eventually does say something, I'm going to fall in love with them. I'm going to immediately just be like, oh my God, dude, I can't even see your face. You're in a mask, but let's go on a date right now. <laughs> That's how much I'm getting iced out. That that a mere utterance of, yeah, you too, would make me be like, are you actually interested in me? Is this a come on? Are you hitting on me right now? And if so, let's do this, dude. Also, I buy I, all I buy from there is monsters, dude. Every time I buy groceries, people are like, "You, uh, you're sad." <laughs> I go to the supermarket, get two monsters like almost every day, and they're definitely like, "What do you eat, bro? Do you ever eat? Is that all you're taking into your body? Maybe that's why I got three canker sores and you're fucking congested, dude. Maybe you should eat a sandwich." Whatever. There's nothing wrong with Monster, dude. People give me shit for it. It's always someone I'm on a date with, too. It's always somebody... Here's the thing about uh, Monster and Axe, really, is that... Do I have enough time for this? The timer's about to go out. You know what? I'm going to let the timer... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut this off because the timer's about to go out and the camera is, too. I'll see you guys in a sec for the second half. What's up? I'm back. So, Monster. I think I've said this about Axe already. But I'll say it again. Who gives a fuck, dude? <laughs> it's just me. I'm going to repeat myself, dude. It's just me. This is the third year of this podcast. I'm going to repeat shit. It's just, what it, it's just what it is. But the thing about Monster is it's always somebody... Monster and Axe, it's always somebody who is already... Uh, uh, intimately with me that makes a comment about it. Do you know what I'm saying? Every time with Axe, it's somebody, I'm on a date with them, and they're talking about colognes and shit, and they're like, oh, do you wear cologne? And I always go, oh, yeah, yeah, I wear, you know, I like wear deodorant and stuff. They go, oh, yeah. They go, I go, why? Do you have a preference with it? They go, well, I just would never date a guy who who uses Axe. Like, I would never date a dude who uses Axe. Like, what are you, a fucking child? And then, and then I just go, oh yeah. And they go, yeah, well you smell really good though. Or sometimes I go, I go, how do you think I smell? And they go, oh, you smell great. You smell really good. And I've had women, I've had women specifically bring up how good I smelt. Who were women who, who were women who hated Axe. Who were women who made it a point to say Axe is for fucking kids and I don't fuck kids, so fuck that. <laughs> and then after seeing them for a little bit and us having sex and whatnot and then they see me get ready in the morning, they see that they in fact did fuck a child because I'm putting Phoenix in my underarm. <laughs> They're like, I don't fuck kids. If you were Axe, you're 12 years old. And I get said, guess what? I'm not 12, but I'm 13. And you fucked this kid. And I rub <laughs> Phoenix into my underarms. And then I spray. And they fucking are like, God damn it, dude. Right? There's no Old Spice here, dude. There's absolutely no Old Spice. And... The same thing happens with Monster, where somebody has an idea in their head of like, I would never date a dude who drinks Monster. Fuck that. Fuck you for drinking. People who drink Monster are disgusting. And then what happens is I have a romantic evening with the person. And then the next day, or or maybe it doesn't happen until like the third time we're together. And then she sees me either buy or pull out of my fridge a Monster in the morning or afternoon or whenever. And she goes, what's up, dude? 
And they're like, that's disgusting. That's a disgusting thing to drink. And I'm like, "Uh, all right, man, you're holding a coffee right now. You're drinking a coffee right now. And beyond the coffee, you, uh, I saw you do much worse. People will look you in the eye and go, monster is bad for you. And you'll be like, dude, I watched you drink seven gin and tonics last night. What the, who the fuck are you to judge? Okay. Oh, what? I'm going to get a bit of a sugar rush. I think you might have the same fucking thing, dude. Literally, people will drink nine rum and cokes. They'll drink nine rum and cokes. You'll have one monster. They'll be like, there's a lot of sugar in that. Did you know that? And I'm like, yeah, dude, absolutely. But you know how much sugar is in your fucking veins right now? More than 50 grams, dude. Anyway, I should stop drinking them, dude. I got canker sores. I don't know if that's the reason for it. I don't know. Every time I look up canker sores, they go, there's no real There's no real way to tell where they come from. Okay, dude. W- w- then figure it out, though. I hate, I hate medical shit where it's like, we don't know. We don't know where it comes from. It's like, yeah, but isn't that, that's your job, though, you know? <laughs> canker sores. We just don't know how they sprout up. Well, it's, tw- it's almost 2022. And with you've the medical field has existed for a long time. Figure out where the sore comes from. We just acne actually is mostly genetic, and we don't really know if it actually comes from greasy foods. Then why are some people saying it does? Why? That's that's where I become sk- skeptical about medicine. <laughs> You know, it's on topic. People are very skeptical. People are all over the place with medicine. What to believe, what not to believe. People are fired up. They don't want to get vaccinated. And I'm over here being like, isn't it, isn't it, I don't know about all that shit, but it's very curious that a guy with an MD will tell me to my face, I don't know where a canker sore comes from. What the fuck, dude? Didn't you spend eight years in school? You spent eight years in school and you can't tell me? If the monster is what's giving me the pain in my mouth, fuck, dude. Who's going to tell me then? And also, if you're not going to tell me that, I'm going to keep drinking and eating whatever fuck I want. No, they do say acidic things irritate a canker sore, but they don't know where a canker sore comes from. Okay, dude. Okay. Whatever, dude. I'm not anti-medicine, but that makes me question. (laughs) I'm like, dude, I'll get the vaccine, but like, what the fuck? Why don't you know where a canker sore comes from? (laughs) That's very sus, dude. Oh, shit. hot as fuck in here no air conditioning dude no air conditioning for you for the listeners no air conditioning i'm burning up for you boys for you boys and gals oh man my phone has been dying and i don't know if you guys have noticed this but your phone the phone i guess is a new feature i gotta it's not that new of a phone it's like two years old but it's it's new because i lost my other one and then i had to get a new one because I'm fucking stupid as shit, dude. No, because I... I, Because you order an Uber, and you're waiting for the Uber, so your phone is in your hand, because you don't want to fucking not know the license plate when they come up, because a lot of times they come up, and you don't immediately fucking go to them, and then they just drive away. That's happened to me so many times. The guy comes up, I'm on the corner, he drives away. I'm like, I'm looking right at you, dude. What the fuck? Did you not did you just not like the cut of my jib? <laughs> did you not like the pants I was wearing? Why did you drive away? I'm here. Did do I look like a guy who's not going to tip? Like I don't I don't I don't understand why you drove away, dude. In Nashville it happened to me. Some dude called me up and said, "Hey, are you on this corner?" And I was like, "Yeah, dude." He's like, "I'm going to be there in a minute." I was like, "Okay." 
He's lined up behind a bunch of cars. In Nashville, you can't see people's license plate from the front because there's no license plate on the front of the car in Nashville. Why? Because it's stupid. I don't fucking know why. All right? I'm not going to condemn all of Nashville. It was, a, it was a pretty chill place. But the fact that you don't have a license plate on the front of your car, that's fucking stupid, dude. Especially when things like Uber exist. You got to know the plate. So I got to fucking find your plate as you're driving away from me. What? At that point, he's just going to keep driving. So I'm walking. I'm, I'm, I'm clearly looking at the back of these people's car cars. I'm walking down a line of cars, looking at the license plates, looking at every, stopping to look at every single one. And I walk by this guy's license, this guy's car, and he's watching me walk by him. And he's watching me trying to find out if it's his car. Then he drives up and goes around the corner and I spot him. I spot his license plate. Finally, I walk up to him. He's parked with his hazards on, on the shoulder. And I walk like, like he's like going to pick me up. And I walk up and I point into the car at him. I go, yo, Uber. And then he goes, no, 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 no. He sla- he does the throat slash, the air throat slash. No, 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 no. And I go, what? And then I look at my phone and he, he canceled the Uber in front of me. He looked me in the eyes and canceled it as I said, yo, you're my Uber, right? And then, and then the people I was with, the, the 17 people I was with, they were like, yo, did you, yo, what happened? That's not your Uber, dude. That's not your Uber. Check the plate. I go, I just fucking did, dude. That's, that's the Uber. He just fucked me. He's a cunt. <laughs> He's a fucking douchebag, dude. He's an asshole. So anyway, that's why I lost my phone. <laughs> it's because I, because I'm a cunt, and uh, I was when I wait for Ubers, I have my phone in my hand, and then I get in the car, and then my phone is in my lap a lot of the time because I don't think to just put it right into my pocket again. Also, I want to tip the guy and rate him immediately, so I leave the phone at the ready. But sometimes you're very drunk and you forget the phone is at the ready and then it gets left in a fucking car and the guy and then you call the guy up the next day and he pretends like it's not he doesn't have your phone. (laughs) He pretends like he didn't steal your phone. And it's not even his fault. It's Uber's fault because they're like Uber Uber has a policy, an amazing policy where they'll give your driver 15 bucks if he gives you his phone back. If he gives you your phone back, they're going to give him 15 bucks. Make it higher, dude. Or I'm going to pay 15 bucks to get the... Make it higher. Say passengers are required to pay drivers 200 bucks if they lose their phone. Every every Uber driver would, would pray for a phone to be lost in their car so they could return it and get a $200 bonus. And don't tax it at all. Don't fucking take a percentage out of it. Because you didn't do shit. The, the, like, uh, Uber not only is giving, uh, making me pay $15 to the driver, but then they're probably taking a cut of the 15 bucks. Do you think that I'm going to get my phone back? No. you. But you know. And I'm not going to pay him the 15 bucks because he's not going to give me my phone. What is the point of that? Make it 300 bucks and take tw- 20 bucks of it. Uber, you'll make a lot of money, and the fucking drivers will make a lot of money. And that way they won't fucking sue you for your horrible work practices or whatever the fuck. I don't know. I don't know shit, dude. I don't know. I've heard bad things about Uber. I don't really know. I love the app. I love the drivers, but I've heard bad things. <laughs> Put it this way. it's People often go, you should use Lyft. And I go, why? They're like, ah, eh, things. Heard things. Do you know specifically anything? I don't know. The COE, the C, the COEs. I have no command of the English language, dude. The COE. The CEO's a fucking douche. I don't know. The CEO's a racist cunt. I don't, I don't know. I have no idea. I've heard mixed things. I've heard people be like, yeah, I think he's like racist. And the other people are like, well, no, they got a new CEO. And then I'm like, did they? And then someone's like, I don't know. And then I'm like, should I not get Uber anymore? And they're like, download Lyft. And I'm like, I don't have a lot of space on my phone, and here we are. <laughs> I don't have a lot of space on my phone, and now my phone is lost. Fuck, I should have downloaded Lyft. God damn it. Maybe they have a better policy for returning phones. But uh, I don't even know how I fucking got on this. Oh, my phone. That's what I wanted to say. 
So my phone died. It's been dying recently. And I noticed that on your phone when it dies, it says wallet still active. Wallet and keys. I don't know what the keys are. Maybe if you have... I don't know. Maybe I could hook it up with my work where it like scans with my ID. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the key aspect of the phone is, but it says wallet and wallet is that annoying fucking thing. I'm pretty sure it's that annoying fucking thing where if you a- accidentally click the wrong button, your f- credit card comes up and you can like scan your card to pay for shit. Very futuristic. Very cool. I guess if you want to use that, I don't ever do it, but The fact that my phone is powered off, it literally, when I click it, it says recharge your battery. The fact that at the bottom it says, but you could still access your wallet, it makes me look at the phone and go, then then you have battery, dude. Give me my battery. Okay? Give me the choice of listening to Kendrick Lamar and not having an option to pay you for anything dude do you understand what i'm saying i have a credit card in my pocket i don't need it digitally let me listen to kendrick let me listen to kendrick until the phone explodes dude it's my choice my phone my choice dude (laughs) it's ridiculous i fucking hate it man it's ridiculous also, keys. Who's doing the keys thing? If, if, if that gives access to your house or something, if you have a, a key implies it's something you don't want other people to get into. Why would you put that information on your phone? I guess it's few and far between, though, right? Because fucking what? The card's on there. Everything else is on there. Your whole life is in your phone. Isn't that fucked up? There's that scene in The Sopranos where he's Kevin Finnery and and uh, and spoiler alert. It's when Tony's in the coma. Spoiler alert. If you haven't watched The Sopranos, go watch it. Now you know he's in a coma. Sorry, but you should have watched it by fucking now, dude. Not only has it been years and years since it's been on, but the pandemic happened. You have no excuse not to watch, not to have watched The Sopranos. The movie's coming out. You got no excuse to not have watched the fucking show. It's one of the greatest shows of all time. Get with it, dude. But he has a briefcase, uh, and and Tony goes, uh, "My whole life's in there." My whole he keeps saying, "My whole life's in there," and that's true with your phone, dude. <laughs> now I'm not making like a pro. I mean, I don't, I don't even know what the connection is there. I don't know why I said that. I, like, I don't even know why was that why, why that was even worth bringing up. But it felt like it was, dude. If you made that scene now, he'd just have a cell phone. My whole life's in there. And it wouldn't even be like a metaphor in his dream. It'd be like, damn, dude, you're right. <laughs> Your whole life is in there. And it wouldn't even be a coma. It'd be just in. Li- it'd just be an episode. He wouldn't be in a coma at all. He would just be Tony Soprano worried that he's going to fucking lose all his passwords. <laughs> My whole life's in there. I heard that a lot of mob shit is just like weird online gambling shit. I heard it's all online shady business. I guess that makes sense, but that's so fucking boring. That's the thing. Science fiction makes things boring. Or not even science fiction. Science nonfiction. The the more digital we become and the more uh, away from tangible things we become, the worse movies will be. 100%. The worse television will be. Because you gotta, you, you know, it's all about show, don't tell. And if all you're showing is a computer screen to tell the information, you're going to bore your audience. <laughs> There'll be ways for people to integrate it. It's already happening. I didn't watch Zola, but I heard that like in Zola, people's phones are just going off constantly. And that's very interesting to me. I'm really, I'm excited to see more things like that happen uh, in film as time goes on. As kids grow up, there's going to be more and more of just like cell phones and technology be, be, and I think that's part of, I think that's what it's going to be is like, it'll just be a backdrop. Like the movie doesn't have to be about cell phones, but someone's cell phone should be going off because that's just a part of our fucking life. You know, like a vibrating phone at this point should be a part of room tone because <laughs> it's rare that you're in a place and you don't hear something like that.
I don't know. There's probably somebody right now being like, um, I never hear that, so fuck you. <laughs> no, no one's saying that. No one's listening to this. <laughs> uh, 9-11, dude. <laughs> oh, fuck. I got a couple things. Okay, there was this dude at the bar who just... I was at the bar with some friends and there were these two people in the corner talking to some dude who was kind of immediately, I've said this before in the podcast, I think, but I'm learning as I get older, I, I can sense a bad fucking person immediately. I am very good at going, that guy sucks. And that guy sucked. He just felt bad. There was something off about him. He was being weird. But he was being like friendly and outgoing in a way that seemed like it might turn bad. And he's talking to these two people in the corner and he's like, I haven't been to this bar in such a long time. I love this bar. I haven't been here in years. And then the woman, it's a man and a woman talking to a guy who has bad vibes. And the woman goes, why haven't you been here in four years or in years? And he goes, oh, I just got out of prison. And he laughs. And they don't know if he's fucking with them or not. And I don't either. I'm like, maybe he's fucking with them. I don't know. And then she goes, what'd you go to prison for? And he goes, attempted murder. And then it gets a little more serious and weird. And then she goes, who'd you attempt to murder? And he goes, I don't want to talk about that. (laughs) I don't want to talk about that. I'm not going to talk about that. Which was two things. It was like, well, you brought it up, dude. (laughs) I mean, I guess he did it. He just said four years. He kept it cool. And she asked some more questions. And I guess she asked one too many questions. So never mind. First of all, he didn't bring it up. I guess it's not two things. It's just one thing. Uh, Is he fucking with you or not? Like, is he fucking like, do I don't know. He could be. But the way he said, I don't want to talk about it or I'm not going to talk about it, was so sincere that I was like, all right, man, this guy might, I don't know. But then again, he was, the vibes were bad, but he, I couldn't tell, like his, like the way he acted as a per, like the, what the, just the aura he gave off fucking sucked. But enough to attempt to murder someone, I don't know. Anyway, the night progresses and he starts saying weird stuff to the bartenders. That's like a jo- like Joe. He's like, yo, I'm going to start a, I'm going to start a boat where we sell tacos and you guys are going to serve drinks on it. You guys are going to serve drinks and tacos and clean it. And we're going to hang out. Ha ha ha. And we're going to dance. It'd be fun. And it was like, all right, dude, what do you, what does that mean? You're going to like, what is this? Like a slit, like a, like a forced labor ship. Like what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> You guys are going to come on my ship and just work all day. I'm going to make tacos. Ha <laughs> It's like, well, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I don't know if that's appealing. But they were laughing and it was fine. And then he says something to the to the couple uh, that I don't really hear what he says, but he starts getting aggressive. And then he starts saying, I was being nice to you. I've been I've been nice to you. And then the woman goes, well, you've never been you've, you've never been nice. And then the bartender goes, she starts getting involved and looking over because this guy's getting intense. And she's like, yeah, they're right. You've never been, you haven't been nice at all tonight. And then he goes, whatever, I don't need to be nice. And he doesn't direct it towards the bartender. He just directs it towards the, the couple. And mainly the woman. He goes, I don't need to be nice to you. I don't fucking need to be nice to you. Why the fuck do I need to be nice to you? I don't give a shit about you. Fuck you. And then he says to the guy, he goes, yeah, you too. Fuck you too. I don't give a shit. You guys have been giving me bad bad energy all night. You guys have been fucking shitting to me all night. Fuck you. You guys had a, have had an had a opinion about me all night. Fuck you guys. And then at this point, the bar back, who is also the bartender, is like, hey, what's going on? And the bartenders have kind of looked at him like, hey, man, do something. This guy's weird. And at this point, also, me and those other two people, I've heard that he maybe is attempted murder. So we're also like, well, that's part of the mix. And the bar back comes over. And he starts going, hey, 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 real loud, clearly at the guy. And he goes, all right, last last call for drinks, everybody. He shouts that because it's also closing time. But the guy doesn't register it as that was to the bar. He thinks it's, or he doesn't register as that was directed towards him. He takes it as like that was towards the bar because it was, but also read the room, dude. 
And so when he thinks it's to the room, he goes, thank you, man. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, last call. Thank you. Fuck these people. And the barback goes, hey, man, you got to go. I'm talking to you. And then he goes, all right, you talking to me? Well, fuck you too then. Fuck this place. Fuck this whole bar, dude. Fuck everybody. I'm going to fuck. And then he storms out. He storms out of the bar. And I'm, I sit th- I'm sitting there watching him leave. And I just think to myself, I, that guy definitely attempted murder. <laughs> that guy definitely tried to kill somebody. I mean, he, technically, he might have attempted it right there. I don't, know. I don't know. I don't know what constitutes attempt where you then go to prison. You know, it's probably strangling someone until they almost die. And then they're like, you got to go away for a while. <laughs> you know? And then I looked at the couple and I was like, that guy was really cool. <laughs> And they laughed and they were like, that guy was crazy, right? I was like, yeah, he was so cool. They're like, yeah, he was really cool. I was like, especially because he attempted murder. They go, you heard him say that? I go, of course I did. When somebody says they attempted murder, whether you're listening to their conversation or not, you heard what they said. Do you know what I'm saying? Your ears perk up when someone mentions murder. And the fact that they've been a party to it or, or almost a party to it, you know? My buddy is subconsciously ready for that conversation to be heard immediately. <laughs> Whether I want to or not. Anyway, there's not much time left in the podcast, but uh, I guess I could talk about... I guess we could talk about Certified Pedophile. We could talk about that. I haven't listened to the album at all. Uh, certified lover boy is what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. I don't even need to say it. Certified pedophile, dude. I think it's wild that like people, like people get really mad at Kanye and I guess he, Kanye is fucked, but like, isn't Drake also, (laughs) there's a video, dude. uh, Okay. There's been a lot of alleged things about him where he talked to women before when they were children and then they become 18 and then he starts fucking them, which is a weird thing to do. Okay. At the very minimum, it's a strange thing to do at the maximum. You're a gross, weird fuck. I mean, that's not even at the maximum. That's at the medium at the maximum. Fuck you. Like, I don't even know, dude, at the maximum, I can't even, some people might want to kill you for that kind of behavior. You know, I don't, I, I can't say what people's, what the punishment uh, should be for certain people's crimes, but damn, dude, don't, don't, don't befriend kids and then fuck them when they're of age. That's disgusting. But anyway, even if you hear that and you're like, I don't know if that's true, could not be true. The whole Millie Bobby Brown thing where she was texting him and she kept bringing up how they texted and then. And then apparently, and then she walked it back in interviews where she's like, people are making it weird. It's not weird. It might not be, dude. It might not be. It might not be. Maybe Drake is just friends with Millie Bobby Brown. Maybe that's just like, maybe he just was like, hey, I know fame is a lot. If you ever want to talk to me, I can I can help you through fame. If you ever want a fucking grown adult man to talk to about your problems, I'm the one. And then after three years of being the best of friends and me coaching you through being famous, then we can maybe take our relationship to the next level. No, I see. I'm putting shit in. I don't know if that's in it. I'm just, I don't know. It's just weird, dude. It's weird to be in your thirties talking to a 14 year old or 60. Anything under the age of 19 is pretty strange. Anyway. All that aside, it's all alleged, I guess. No, I like I don't know for a fact. I don't know. But I do know for a fact that he, there's a video of him at a concert where a woman comes out on stage, not a woman, a girl, and he goes, "How old are you?" And she says, "17." And then he looks at the crowd and goes, "I shouldn't." And then he kisses her on the lips. <laughs> I don't listen. I don't know the crimes he's. I don't know if he's committed any crimes or or what what he is really doing. But I do know that he he on stage went. How old are you? 
And then when a woman was like, I'm not old enough for you to kiss me, he was like, I'm going to kiss you in front of a giant crowd of people. That's a weird fucking thing to do. <laughs> it's a weird thing to do. And I just, I feel like, I know people bring it up a lot. I guess. I don't know. I don't see enough people. I see people getting mad. I don't know. I'm just saying, like, I don't, I don't, I don't like Trump and I don't agree with uh, uh, his politics. And I don't like that Kanye, like, uh, like, I don't agree with Kanye where he, when he wears a MAGA hat, but I'd rather you wear a MAGA hat than talk to a kid at 15 and then fuck them at 18. You know what I'm talking about? For those le- reasons alone, I think I might want to listen to Donda first. <laughs> Than certified pedophile, you know? <laughs> also, Andre 3000, Donda, like, that song that Drake leaked, I, like, Drake basically bodied himself by by leaking that song. Why would you leak that song, dude? That song, I, I haven't listened to the Drake album, so again, I don't know, but I'm willing to bet, I'm willing to bet that song is better than his whole album. I'm willing to bet it. No, I shouldn't say that. He might have a great album. I don't fucking know, dude. I'm not the big... I don't really like his music that much. But it is what it is, dude. (laughs) The fuck does he give a shit about me? I got 10 people listening to this. On a good night. So, Drake, carry on, keep making music, stop fucking kids, or stop talking to kids and then fucking them when they're, I guess, adults. And Kanye, just calm down, dude. Just chill out. (laughs) Chill out. Let people curse. Andre 3000 got is not on your album because you wouldn't let people curse. Just let people curse. Or tell them ahead of time, yo, dude, I'm going to take the curses out. That way, Andre 3000 can go, I don't want to do it then. But you know what? Then again, I'm, I'm kind of happy that you didn't tell him because it got leaked and we got that song. And he might not have done the song if he couldn't curse. Anyway, Andre 3000... This, the moral of the story is Andre 3000 is amazing, and I love him. Anyway, thank you guys for listening. Uh, I'm sweaty as fuck right now. The camera might be even out. I don't know. But if it is, sorry. If it isn't, what's up? Uh, this was another fun fucking time as always. Uh, yeah. Thank you for listening. As always, I love you guys, and I'll see you next week. Jake, you're an idiot. Jake, you don't make 